Hello, my amazing, beautiful, wonderful artists. Stephanie Ani coming to you from Concord, California. It's a kind of an overcast day out there. <sighs> I've got so much stuff going on in my brain that it's really hard to keep this video condensed, but I'm going to try to do it. Okay? I'm going to try to go fast. <laughs> this is like the fourth time I've done it. This is um, the video for the Step Right Up layout. Uh, it does show you how I've done this background here. Um, I I had completely edited and converted this video. It was ready to be uploaded, but I've decided to kind of switch it up. Uh, the way that I put this background is the same way that I did the backgrounds on these guys. So I'm going to fast forward you through that part. And then um, I am going to keep you real time for uh, the overworking session. Uh, I, I, I ruined the page. Uh, I overworked, I attempted, I tried something and it didn't work. So I took that part off and I fixed it and I made it work. Um, the reason why I leave that in this video, you would never know it. You would never know it. I could easily edit all that out. You would never know that I messed that up. But I think that it's a valuable way for you to learn that this stuff isn't always easy. This stuff doesn't come natural. And if you do not push and you do not try and you do not experiment, then your stuff will look the exact same from um, page to page to page to page to page. And that's boring. Truly. If, if you're not pushing your limits, if you're not experimenting, if you're not trying, then you're just regurgitating your same old process over and over and over. You're not growing as an artist. So uh, you, you can't have fear. Now, I knew that the thought behind what I did was a good thought. And so um, I really, really pushed that. Um, what I did was I put a piece of tissue paper, the Tim Holtz Melange tissue paper over the top of this. And then I sprayed it with ink. <laughs> trying to get my colors right, trying to get it to work right. And at certain spots, if I would have stopped, it probably would have been really cool. I didn't stop because it still wasn't just right until it ended up just kind of becoming a brown mass. And I was going to let it dry. And then I looked at it and I decided to pull it off. And, and I did. And it tore the paper underneath. Um, this is part of the torn paper. This is part of the torn paper. This is... This is, this is. So I chose to leave that in because I came back and I made an amazing piece after that. I am so happy with this background. Um, but if I would not have tried that, I would have thought about it and I would have wondered and wondered and wondered if I could have made it better. Ended up it wasn't better. You just can't have fear. I mean, you don't want to ruin your book by getting it too saturated. That's the one fear that we really have. But other than that, if something doesn't turn out good, you can take it down as much as you can down to the original page and put another piece of paper over the top of it and remake it. Do something else. Do not be afraid. You can fix it. It's okay. We all mess up. Everybody does. If you don't push yourself, you're not learning. And I'm learning every single day by doing my art. And that's part of what's so interesting and amazing about it. If I, you know, I could never sit there and do the exact same thing over and over and over and over. It's boring. There's no challenge to it. So <laughs> I'm going to stop talking about that now, but that's, that's, that's the premise behind this video. And that's kind of why I had to, to do this video the way that I did it. Since you've got a new video, I am adding popcorn bags to the goodie box. 
this is this is your prize edition. Um, now, if you're not doing a circus book, you don't have to use this for the circus book. You could actually put popcorn in it. Now, I can't eat corn at all, but you could put popcorn in it, and you could give it to your family, and you could carry it around, and you could put it in your purse, and that'd be cool, because then you have a little popcorn snack, and that's a good, healthy snack. The other thing is that you could do with this is you can always tear up the pieces of paper uh, and use it somewhere, or what great little gift sacks. I mean, truly, you could put your gift in there, as long as it's not too big, you know, roll it up, put a staple in it, put a bow on it, put a rivet in it. Who cares how you do it, but this would be. So you don't have to just use it for an altered book. You can use it for anything you got. So, Carolyn, I am so sorry, though. I went to the post office before I went to the store. You did not get a package of these. I'm so sorry. Um, I am thinking together about putting together a circus pack um, let me know if any of you guys would be interested in it. It wouldn't be cheap. Um, I could do a copy set for you. I could get you some of the, um, uh, add in the popcorn bags and probably give you some of this paper since I have a ton of it. Um, if anybody would be interested in a circus pack, let me know. Uh, you can contact me through, uh, my Gmail address, email address that is on the, um, It'll probably be close to at least around 75 bucks. Uh, yeah, because the copy pack, doing color copies is expensive. And I don't want to go through all my ink. Because I don't want to replace those cartridges. Okay, uh, what's next? Uh, oh, my shout outs, my thank yous. I'm sorry, guys, I've got so much to do. If I didn't already say thank Here. you. Let that dry with those guys. Okay. I'm going to put you back on. Um, so for this, I'm going to use my brightest colors. Mm. Let's, look at, let's look at colors we want to use. Kind of liking these pinks. We're going to use higher contrast. Ooh, that one's gorgeous. Too small. We are going to use that one maybe in the background and build over the top of it. Those are beautiful. Oh, that one's gorgeous. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, and what contrasting tones do we want to go with? We can go with either the greens or the blues or a lot of the reds, don't I? But that was that was kind of the main colors that I picked out to do that with. That's a great pattern. It's an excellent pattern. And let's look actually here at a couple of the darker ones. Kind of liking these guys. Not long enough. I want full strips. Why did I cut them that short? Because I just didn't know what I was going to do with them. Yeah, noise. All right, let's do let's do this. Let's try this. Uh, okay. Just had a thought. So remember, this is going to be our 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 ticket taker uh, page. I think that'll work well, actually. So uh, this has some lettering on it. I think it's a great graphic element. Again, since it's scrapbook paper, let's go ahead and go with a, a better glue. It's just nice not to fight the glue. Just make it, you know, not have it stick right. There we go there. Maybe three strips of this. Do I have enough for three strips each? I should cut it down actually, but we're not going to because I've got the glue in my hand and it's going down. I can take it all the way to the edge. Yep. 
we're going to build over that. And then uh, we're only going to put two strips on the side of the dark. Break it up here a little bit. stuff falling off of my hands. No, 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 no. We don't need you doing that. Why do you always have goobers under your fingernails? Because <laughs> I'm an artist. Fingers are your best tools. <sighs> it's funny, there was somebody who mentioned on Facebook about, uh, I think it was probably one of the stays on inks or the archival inks on Oh, there's a message on the back that says, you know, warning, this is, you know, according to the state of California, this product has um, things that can harm you in it or whatever. The, the woman was like, what do you think of this? It's like, uh, they're art supplies. Art supplies are toxic. <laughs> you know, it wasn't until the 80s that they started to use alternatives uh, for oil paints other than turpentine. For, for cleaners for brushes, you know? And I think I had one teacher who, who insisted on walnut oil as the cleaner for your brushes instead of turpentine. Walnut oil didn't work for crap, you know? Cadmium paints have, I think, lead in them, uh, or cadmium, probably. I don't know what's in it, but, uh, you know, the cadmium reds were always really bad for you. And yeah, artists over the times have died from their art supplies. 
they do cause cancer. Um, so just be careful with what you're working with. You know, I give myself a lot of exposure. I probably shouldn't give myself that much exposure, like when I'm burning my alcohol bottles. You know, burning that um, ink isn't a good thing, I'm sure. But that's just part of the game for me. Uh, you know, with my Crohn's, it'll kill me young anyways. And I'm, I'm well aware of that. This is a little bit of uh, the uh, Mermaid Lagoon. What I'm just doing here is I'm just kind of knocking it back just a bit. This is going to have stuff built up on top of it. I took back the intensity a bit. It might have taken it back too much, but uh, with what's going to get built over the top of it, I think we'll be okay. Um, I don't usually use darker papers like this, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Let's actually put yellow on this instead of blue. Let's come back in here. This is uh, the um, mustard seed. Let's see what happens if we can't warm it up just here a touch. There it is. I remember our Mod Podge is still wet. Everything is still being affected by everything else. If you let things dry in between, it'll probably react differently. Turned out very green, didn't it? So we just used blue and green together in the spray inks. So um, let's try one thing. We have our isopropyl alcohol. Uh, you might be able to get a little, get it all over the place. Might be able to get a little bit of the staining off of there here. Let's see what we can do. Just the adjustment of the colors. I've got a little dark. I don't hate it. Again, there will be things built over the top of this page. So, now that's a gorgeous piece of paper right there. It's a really interesting color uh, that's happening. I like it. Kind of this surrealistic, really mimicking that color, actually. Little letters back there. We've got a, a little bit of buckling. Hopefully that dries itself out. This got a big glob of glue right there. Let's see if we can't pull that up a little bit without pulling up the paper too much. The paper's wanting to kind of come up. don't want that. Or maybe we do want that. So you guys doing this at home, don't go as dark as I did. Again, this one went dark quickly. Uh, I, you know, the pink was bugging me. It was too pink. But it went dark fast. There's the Mod Podge coming off. It's just rolling off the page now. I'm going to start pulling up the paper soon. I'm not sure if I like that or not. I kind of like that. It's super grunge that's happening with that. Oh, don't pull up the paper. Kind of this torn feeling. Kind of a seedy place, you know? Interesting. I like it. I, I do like what's happening. I'll cover this up here once it dries a little bit more. Go back in there with, oh, here, I'll just spray it with a little mustard seed right off the bat, which is almost gone.
That's cool. I like it. Okay, we are at quite a ways in now. We're at another 58 minutes. I have a feeling that I'm going to have to come up with another prize and break this down into two parts. It's going to be really hard to fast forward you through everything here. better to wait for this to dry before we cut it, but I'm impatient. Come on, baby. Come on. I'm just going to kind of sit that guy over there. Yeah. Don't close your book. It will uh, stick together. You know what that needs? That needs a large, big old squirt of, uh... Look at the pink. Who's on here? This is the uh, picked raspberry. I was uh, thinking of a different color. I was actually thinking about the espresso, but I think the espresso would have gotten too dark. Look at that. That raspberry was perfect too, because it just kind of blends into there. know what I'm feeling here. I'm feeling something in here. Not really sure what at this point in time. Uh, you know, it's, I just need to sit with it for a bit here and, and uh, let it percolate. Tissue paper over the top of this, like the uh, melange, would be really beautiful. A napkin overlay might be kind of cool. Um, we know I use this melange a lot in, I think it's, that's what it's called, if I'm pronouncing it right. And if you watched any of my second book, Construction, you'll know that I like this stuff quite a bit. I like the words, I like the butterflies. Give it enough space. Make sure give it enough space. And why? Again, I don't know. Should I? I mean, this is actually that's gorgeous. This I know would be incredible. And we're not looking for something to make it feel like opera. We're looking for something that gives it kind of this um, maybe a European feel. Uh, let, me just, let me just try it. Uh, I'm going to try a little bit of it and see what happens. My gut's wanting me to do it. Uh, it might be the wrong thing to do. I don't know. Let's see what we can do. I think it's falling over on my table.
I'm gonna do it guys. Hopefully I'm not screwing up. I don't know if I am or not. Uh, you know, my gut's telling me to do it. Uh, I'm not sure why. Seems pretty risky to cover up something that I already really enjoy and like. Um, but it does feel like it could be better. So, uh, you know, I'm going to take that step. I know it might not be exactly the same. Whatever that is, that yellow is coming through, which will be okay for this application here. gut says to do it, a lot of times it's right, whether I know it or not, initially, you know? It feels sad to cover up all that beautiful paper. Really sad. But I want it to kind of mold down there also. should have done that. Might be too slick. No feeling. But one thing that we can do from here though is color. That's that raspberry. There's pink. <laughs> There's our pink. Oh boy. Leave some of it splotchy. Here's our yellow. Not my colors, but they are the colors of the book. And where's my, I need my walnut stain now. There's a walnut stain. Where are you? There it is. Uh, ground coffee dilutions. So brushing some of it out, but not all of it. Uh, so we bring kind of back our darkers here a little bit more. This upper corner seems to be kind of doing some funky things, so let's color it. Uh, here's a dark spot. I'm just dragging my brush through for color. Let's edge it. Yes. It's working. It's scary. It is working. Uh, some more of the raspberry. Let's go with some more of that right over the top here. I hope it comes out. I mean, it's going to look cool. It just, I don't know if it needed it because it was already cool underneath. Um, but it is going to give us additional interest. You know, I, I do know that for a fact. It will. Okay, I'm going to give it one squirt of blue. Or three squirts of blue. <laughs> hmm. Now what are we doing? Checking to see what we can do here. Checking to see what happens. What if we adjust this? What if we adjust that? You know, what's going to happen here? Let's pull some of this back. Oh, hold on. That's cool. 
Where's my ground coffee? More red. Very beautiful. Okay. Now, that's perfect. There are some really beautiful spots in there. And we are going to leave that just like that for now. Uh, we can adjust the colors later. Uh, but wow. And it still kind of all works together. This is very shiny compared to that grungy. This is, you know, it's not that, not that bad though. This will still need to dry. This will, this will look different in the end. And maybe we can pull up just a little bit more. I just want, I want to be sure that that moth is seen because I love that moth. He's so grungy, he's so kind of beautiful though. I'm going to put one more skirt, uh, squirt of that raspberry, see if I can get a little bit more of that right up in here. Painting with the paper towel here. adjusting the colors, just fine-tuning. And this is actually a very perfect background for a uh, shaker ticket booth. That's beautiful. almost totally out. Just me I'm supposed to stop. See how when I do that it kind of it's almost reacting like an alcohol ink. Alright guys, uh, I think I'm going to call that a night for tonight. Uh, I got a lot of work done. Uh, uh, you know, when this gets trimmed down and edged, remember we got to timber brown it all. Um, make sure that that edge sticks down or cuts off, you know, one of the two. So I'll tear it off right now because you'll take a whole lot of paper off with you. It's, it's going to give it a, a really interesting feel. We've got some glick happening here. We don't really know what's happening right here. It'll, it'll get fixed though. We're just going to let it dry and do its thing. And then we'll come back and address it later uh, once we know what's happening with it. It got a little dark right there, didn't it? It's pretty, but it got a little dark. But of course that under paper is very dark right there too. So I don't know how much we can pull back out of it.
I said I like better. Alright guys, I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna just kind of sit and watch my movie. I'm gonna try to relax. I'll let you guys know I don't do that very well. This is the yellow. And uh, this is the blue. This is gonna get covered if I leave it out like that. The blue is dead. <laughs> if I can pull up any more just spots. And I can. It's a great color right there. Beautiful. That's beautiful. This, we need to let it dry and see what happens. And we always hope that you get enough glue down. Don't worry about that. Ooh, the butterfly women. They look kind of cool on this page, wouldn't they? Ground coffee. lost that pink. Okay guys, we'll come back in the morning and see what it's like. I gotta try to clean up some of this crap now that's now exploded all over my desk once again. <laughs> Alrighty, we'll chat soon. Bye. Holy schmoly, what happened? Well, okay. What happened was I had gone too far with it. I had basically turned it black. Uh, really super dark, and uh, I decided I didn't like it. So, this is what we have. Uh, I pulled off that uh, tissue paper. I put a spray of the red and the yellow and a little bit of the blue on here. Um, I'm showing you this because, you know, everybody makes mistakes. Um, it is a part of the process. Now, if I would have stopped probably midway through that whole thing, it would have looked probably just right. Um, but sometimes you go too far. So, what do you do? Do you give up? No. No reason to give up. There, I'm going to take that guy back out, though. Uh, we're just going to go back and fix it. So, I have more of this paper. I have a ton of this paper. I'm not going to stress about it. I'm going to turn around and put a new strip right over the top. Right there. I pulled off as much of the uh, bottom layer as I could without affecting, you know, the rest of it. And I'm just uh, putting the Mod Podge right over that area, trying not to drag it through too much. Now, I do like some of this distress stuff that's happening here. Um, I wanted it grungy. I wanted it dirty feeling. But I still want you to be able to... I still want it to look clean-ish. Does that make sense? A, a clean, dirty, grungy? <laughs> Doesn't really make much sense, does it? I'm looking for the exact right tone right now. Uh, I want a warmer color. The one has a perforated line right down it, unfortunately. Let's see what we have here. 
flip through our uh, yellows, our oranges. Here's a great polka dot. Here's an excellent polka dot. So, you know, why stress? Um, the, uh, the only thing that really causes stress is if it damages the book. And uh, luckily that tissue paper, pretty much so, things have a very hard time absorbing into it. So hopefully the ink kind of stayed on top and didn't absorb into the innards of the book. That's the only time that that mistake, you know, that there's a repercussion really, you know, if your book takes damage, you know, things that can't be fixed, um, you know, permanent book damage is something that's tough to get over. I'm just pushing this in here. We're just going to fix it. I was going to turn off my lights here. Sorry. Oh, that light's brighter than I remember. <laughs> so I, I do still like this, this effect. We don't want to cover all of that, cause, but I do want to bring it back halfway. I really want to push this paper down into that gutter. Nice. Okay, we're going to wipe this off a little bit so we don't lose anything here. Ooh, I have to cover it all up with uh, more paper. Oh well. Crap happens. It was a nice thought. Uh, the background is probably a little bit too dark to try to use the melange. Uh, it does really well on a lighter background. And I put way too much ink over the top of it, but I wanted it to look... I was, I was trying to make it better. And, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, there are no tragedies unless it really truly affects the integrity of the book. Everything can be fixed. Yeah, that's no stress. I tried, and I kept adjusting, and I kept trying, and I kept adjusting and trying, and I just wasn't going to do it, so I pulled it off. Well, this I like. It keeps trying to pick up that blue. Start out light and work darker. Don't go to your darkest colors first. What's the worst that can happen? It doesn't work. Let me restart. go. I like that shape of that tear. This needs to be broken up. This needs to be a little bit broken up. I love the shape of these tears though. I like what's happening. Uh, let me see what I've got that's a thinner piece here. I'm just going to get a coat of Mod Podge over this to protect it. The seedy old ticket guy. The lecherous dude hanging out behind the ticket counter. Yeah. He wants to take your old money. So you all look bizarre, people. That's a perfect piece. Perfect piece to go right there. So we try to find one more. 
because it was right there. Too big. Wish I would have cut those cutters. All the other lines are straight. But it will get stabiloed too. Come on. Come on, just a little bit more. I need to refill all my Mod Podge containers. I bought a new gallon last week. Week before, maybe right before Christmas, maybe. Haven't opened it yet. But I have to now. <laughs> Perfect. Just break out puppy up a little bit here. Swoopy. Swoopy. <sighs> My darling swoopster. Come on, babe. Just a little bit more here. I promise I will refill you in the morning. If I can turn into that color. Probably should. Need something long enough. Make that blue. That's the side that has the wallpaper on it, but wow, look at that piece. It's the contrast. It's all just kind of gut instinct, guys. It's my uh, color theory that's kicking in, but it's also breaking up what's going on here a little bit. Let's scooch this over here. Just do we want it there? Do we want it here? We want the black uh, border on it. Okay, I've got to stop messing with this and look at it with fresh eyes in the morning. Uh, I think it's a really unique page. Jerk. Uh, we'll get it trimmed up. We'll check it out in the morning. You know. That actually works now. Let's get down to work. Uh, I've said all my thank yous. Uh, Patreon people, uh, you do get three extra points names in the hat. 
So thank you so much for your packages went out today. I did get them all mailed. And also my Patreon people, I have another 32 pages that I'm going to put up. And these are some great images. They are reference images. They are, look at this guy. This is cool. This is an artist, so Ringmaster by Malcolm Brown. So um, if I use him, I'm going to say who did it. Okay. Um, but this has all the freak shows. Look at that one. So I was going off of the Barnum and Bailey site and look at this, the main entrance. I think that's going to be something. Um, so you had all the side shows and they were walking towards the main entrance. Here's your ticket guys here. So it's kind of cool. Um, my book is, is coming together. Well, I like how it's happening. These are pretty cool. The images are awesome. Great reference photos, not necessarily something that you'll use in your book. But the reference alone, I, I, you know, I'm a history buff though, so I'm going to look for those images that really spark my imagination. And oh, and then of course I start reading about the the axe and it's crazy stuff, huh? Okay. Hi guys. Okay. So I just counted as I was putting all the stuff back into the the box. You have 15 items there. So I believe you have two videos waiting. This video, the prize has already been added into it. So yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of good stuff in there. A lot of cool stuff. I hope everybody's subscribing. Uh, I know people are watching without subscribing. I can, I can see the view count and then, uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't match with my likes and comments. So you know, hopefully you guys uh, decide to join in and, and, and get in on this uh, really awesome um, prize package. It's worth well over, well, we know it's worth over 250 for sure. It might be worth more than that. Can't tell you right off the bat. I need to add it up. Probably should do that. This is my Timber Round Stays On. You know, it's one of my favorite tools. Uh, we're just kind of uh, just starting out. We're just adjusting the colors a little bit here. Um, doing our vignette already, just right off the bat, just creating our our border. You guys know I do this with almost every single page and piece. Uh, I like to, but well, I really love the richness that this stays on, that the timber brown gives me. It's a very mahogany beautiful color. I don't really want to have to come back uh, later and do this because I'm going to build over the top. And we're just putting a little, hopefully just a little bit of, um, where's my pencil sharpener? I know I have five of them. I can never find them when I want them. Never. Why is that? Why is that? Because my desk is full of crap. So awesome that you guys uh, really enjoyed those travel packs, uh, the, the journal pack as much as you did. Uh, that made me feel really great about the product that I put together for you. I was hoping that it would be something that you guys would enjoy and uh, you proved me right. That is so cool. I'm going to leave that bright stripe there. Uh, just kind of taking it down here just a little bit in these different spots. You don't want to take it down too much because then you kind of lose some of it, you know, that delicious. Sometimes the Stabilo can make things a little kind of muddy or cloudy. So um, I like to kind of be a little bit cautious with it. 
And of course, since uh, you know, you generally do the stabilo last uh, because it is, you know, going to move with whatever product because it's not um, it's water soluble. So it's just going to kind of keep dissolving, and, and it can make things muddy. Absolutely, I just have to be careful of it when I'm doing it. But I need to adjust these colors back here, make them a little bit more interesting. And uh, there we go. Just pull that back just a touch. I wanted I wanted to do that, so uh, just kind of pop back those those bizarre little colors there too. Okay, I like that. This is okay. This is all good. I'm going to take my socks off. My feet are hot tonight. Just strange. This chair, I swear. It's been well used, huh? <laughs> I'm having a cocktail while I'm making. I'm entitled. It's been a long day, once again. Stop by Joanne's. Got some cool stuff. They're having 40% off of all regular priced items, and thank God I didn't know that as I was walking through the store. And then you could get another 30% off, of, or $30 off of a $100 purchase, which they tried to fight me on that. And like, it doesn't say you can't use it with other coupons. You know, she almost didn't give it to me. I'm like, it's your coupons. You know, it's not your money, lady. You don't have to worry about it, but, the, you know. You can't say 40% off and then not do the other coupon that says that it includes all sale items. It doesn't say you can only use one coupon. Not that I could read anywhere. Anyway. So I got a lot of really good stuff. But I needed I needed some, some new things. I, they didn't have any of the spray inks, though. That was the number one thing I was looking for. I'm just going to come back in here and see what I can pull up here with this distress marker. This orange. See what I can pull in here. It's giving a little extra interest. Adding some lines. And yes, I do know that that has the stabilo on it. So this has a very nice fine point. Look what it's doing with that. Just pushing it right into the cracks where I wanted it. And kind of taking it off of this other part here. So we're going to do that right over here too. Perfect. Let's do it here. Just accentuating the lines. This is what we've already done, but it's kind of giving it a little shadow. Let's see here. This color, not very pretty. So let's just kind of color this in here a little bit. I try to keep a wet edge. Um, and with the Mod Podge on there, you can, you know, I am basically painting with the marker here. And that's what I'm wanting to do. I'm, I'm intentionally doing that, obviously. Kind of a wet edge. Don't take out all the interest, but we're just going to knock it back a touch. Stomach's having a bit of a fit. You know, until everything's just kind of settled, it's just going to be what it is. Um, you know, a lot of stress, a lot of life events happening right now. Um, my sleep system does get off, and my stomach will get off. It just does. Uh, yeah, not that I, not that I want it to. I'm trying to sleep. I'm trying to. Just, you know, being productive through this time that, uh, you know, honestly, I don't know what I'd be doing if I wasn't doing this crazy uh, subscriber drive because it's keeping me extremely busy. Um, so I still really haven't had any downtime yet. Just to doing these quick adjustments. Just 
obviously I like what's happening here or I wouldn't continue to do it, right? Different mediums react differently when they're applied to the paper, when they're applied to Mod Podge, when they're applied to whatever, you know, you just have to learn your properties of the products that you like to use best. Because I use certain products doesn't mean that you need to use those products, but, um, oh, Dolly, darling, if you're still in, the, if you're still traveling or whatever, please have a very safe trip, dear. Uh, I'll miss you. I, uh, I hope we'll, you'll be in contact, but I know it'll probably be a little bit hard. So, um, I miss you. Thank you so much for all your wonderful help. She was, um, giving me, in uh, information on Instagram and things like that. I don't use Instagram. I need to change that. And she was, she was giving me some great pointers, some great, some great suggestions. Now, I'm just kind of looking to see where to place him. I think I'm going to put, uh, the greatest show on earth above him. Uh, I was looking at different sizes of him, which I like that. And he's going to get colored down. He's going to get, I think he actually kind of has to be that one, doesn't he? So what I want to do with him is, uh, the antique linen vintage photo. Let's try the vintage photo. I don't want to go too dark too fast. In fact, let's just kind of experiment. These are brand new uh, inkers here. Yeah, see the vintage photo is very dark. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Let's try the antique linen. We know that that's going to be okay. Okay, that's, that's going to vintage him uh, without killing his color too much. How do we want to do this? Let's just move this out of the way real fast and we'll play with this for a minute. So you guys have watched me color with these before. I probably should have left just a touch of him whiter up top. So I'm kind of experimenting with this guy first. He's so creepy. All right, let's look at the two of these and compare what we like best against the background. Now I know I won't have that bright white. I know for sure. Ooh. He's pretty perfect, isn't he? <laughs> so this bright white that we did leave, which I'll leave some more of that up in here, probably. I'll probably leave a band of it if I can. That dude's shady. <laughs> I think it's actually a, a it's a, it's got to be a current photo. Uh, I don't think I can add it to your, um, pack on Instagram or on um yeah Patreon although he's a great reference photo if you guys you know I should be able to provide you with reference photos what you do with the photos is your own business but um you know he's a reference photo to the nth degree that's for sure let's look at I think I have a little bit more interesting line on that there. I don't like that line. Make a shirt line here. Let's do that. You have the power. Don't be afraid to use it. Although it did take down his back a little bit, probably a little bit too much. We'll see here. So your eye is going to automatically be drawn to the whitest white. Oh, 
I'm going to go along the hat band here. We do not want something that's just going to be stark white. to blend into the background a little bit here. Just kind of bring it through, bring it through. It kind of looks like he's coming out from, no, oh, don't do that. <laughs> he's creepy. The creepy dude. Put a little bit more, um, the colors. A little bit more of the worn lipstick, because I know that, you know, my, my, my little inkers here, they're getting pretty worn out. I'm going to pull them just a little bit more forward. I'm going to redden that face a little bit, because... We can. It should be. All right. Well, this is the Victorian violet. Just trying to give it just a little bit more color in there. Let's bring out that um, old paper or shabby shutters. It's one of the two. Let's see here. I'm just gonna put that right into the dark. We're cooling down that yellow, right? We're gonna put it back in the back a little bit more. Let's see this shabby shutters here. Might have been the bundled sage. One of them works better than the others. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Okay, I know that this antique linen is dead. <laughs> yeah, big difference. We'll take that out. I know that this vintage photo is bad. This is the good one. Walnut stain is the bad one. And probably black suit is probably good on all three of them. I just don't use black ink. I think it's uh, just not as rich, personally. Use whatever your little heart desires. So this guy I actually pixelated differently than this guy. Now, let's look here through my images. I still haven't decided fully. There's our photo booth. Cirque du Freak. Love it. I've got this stuff. I wonder what the amazing Amazon woman looked like. I tried to look for a photo of her and I could not find it. Isn't she something? I have no idea who she is. Wow, she's amazing. And here's a cabinet card of this guy. I have only seen him sitting down. And that hair is incredible. These are the new images that are going to be on the Patreon. Here's our reference for the photo booth. This is our ticket booth. Here. Some tickets. Strange people. Direct from Iceland, Viking Giant Alive. Is this guy? Crazy. Step right up, the American Sideshow. Okay, so I was making these today. Step right up. Step right up. Gosh, they're a little bit too big. Then the peep show ladies. Because they did actually have you know peep shows in there with the circus and um, the woman that swung around by her mouth. 
this woman. I don't know if this is a vintage photo, but if it's not a vintage show, I mean, it's an incredible image. I love this image. And I'll do, I've, um, I had the friend who asked me, um, if I would do him a book of women. And now I've actually found some women that I think would be very mystical, very, uh, incredible. And her being one of them. Here's, here's the guy I was looking for. And then this I kind of liked. And here's this guy in his natural habitat. So we know that this is, excuse me, a recent photo. This kind of feels like the Gangs in New York guy, but it's not Daniel Day-Lewis. Images, 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 images. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. I'm, I'm seeing this actually as being part of it. I don't want to cover up my awesome background yet or at all. You know, make sure your inks are closed. People don't do like I do. Let's uh, make sure we've got 90 degree angles here before we tear. We're going to cut this down as much as we can. There is something about the uh, pure Americana of this image, which obviously somebody constructed this great I mean, it's awesome. It's a great, whoever did that, you did a wonderful, amazing job. Uh, so cool. Let's see if we can't get a better, um, this was a real life guy here. What I actually want is that. But I kind of like this guy here too. So we're going to do something here first. Before we decide on anything. Mm-hmm. More images. Now. little antiquing on that and that'll take that white down we don't need any white but we could do step right up we could do it in three words we could do it in one banner I guess I decided to do it in three words Let's adjust those colors. Uh, I'm sure that they're bothersome to you as they are to me. Let's take out that antique linen again.
It's okay that it crumpled there. It's all right. All right. Go on. In fact, let's force it. See what happens. Doesn't want to stay up there. Oh, look how gorgeous that is, though. So we're just distressing it. Do I want it like that? Do I want it face on? Do I want it there? Kind of like that. Shouldn't he be saying little girl after that? Ooh. So this color will still get adjusted. I think I like the feeling of this guy a little better. Yeah. Yeah, we're going with the creepy guy. Let's see if we can do this real fast. Usually not one much for fussy cutting, but I love the shape of this thing. I love the shape of it, but it doesn't work because there's the guy's face right there. Ooh. Look at his face through there. Is that like, does that work or is it just too freaky? It's pretty much so too freaky. But let's look at this. What's that shape? We're just not going to be able to do it. What am I seeing here? What, why am I seeing this? Remember, I have the printer plugged in so I can go print out more of this if I want to.
kind of like it like that. So if I'm looking here up through your view, you guys can probably be out here a little bit more. Sorry about that. This shape is excellent here. And we can tone him down. Let's let's just be bold. Let's be bold, my darlings. It's scary. It's scary to be bold. I've had almost a disaster on this page. And you know, I'm really using a an image that isn't congruent with the rest of it. So uh Yeah, it's 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 being bold. All right, I need to pull this down here a little bit, guys. Sorry, I gotta see. Come here, come here, Doc. Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. Wow, you're sticking really super fast. Okay, it's gonna be that way. Been a little crooked. So we're gonna force the crooked. Making it work, uh, making it look purposeful. It was not purposeful for it to be crooked and then it screamed at me when I tried to move it. So, um, let's uh, grab our paper towel. I did get some more of this today. Come on, buddy. Had to drop off some artwork for a client and they have an office building. So they have good paper towels in their office building. <laughs> Don't condone that. Don't advise it. All those paper towels just go in the garbage. Need to go to the store. I was gonna do it today, but honestly, I just after I had had enough peopling after Joanne's and after um, Dollar Tree. Oh. I want it to overlap a little bit, but I don't want to totally cover the words. Nose is all stuffed up again. Allergies. It's allergies. Rain stopped today, which was nice since I had to bring the printer up from the garage. But everything's going to be blooming, which is gorgeous, but it does affect my allergies for sure. Okay, uh, I, I'm not in love with it yet. You know, I'm never a fan of just gluing images down like this. It's not my thing. But we'll see. I, I'm sure I can, with the Stabilo and with the you know, additional inks and such, it'll be good. He's really melting into there nicely, so that's a great thing. Almost kind of has a transfer feel to it. Get that pushed in here. We're gonna let him dry before doing anything more with him. He has really melted onto that page awesomely. Oh, let's not use that scissors on that part. I don't know if I have 
have the energy to do this, guys. I'm kind of like tearing that off like that. That was good. Let's uh, get some glue in here. The color of his vest matches perfectly. That can be good. Oh, looking at it from your view, I think it will be good. Just have to uh, vintage it. I said I was going to let it dry, didn't I? I don't even know the difference. Like he was supposed to be there. Paint him on there. How cool that lettering came out. <laughs> the crumpling up gave these really great lines uh, in it. So I put the initial ink on it and then I crumpled it. And uh, somehow when I crumpled it, it lost the uh, ink in those lines. And that tear spot is excellent. He's creepy. Where am I? I'm at 42 minutes on this. All right, guys. I think I'm gonna stop. Um, there's our Barker guy. Makes me feel like I want to put one more coat of Mod Podge over that. A little bit more over his face here. I'm gonna look at it tomorrow. I'm tired. I'm tired tonight. All right, guys. Have a good evening. We'll chat soon. Maybe I'll just leave it like it is here, and maybe I'll just do that for this page. All right. Bye. Good morning, artists. It is um, what time is it here? Almost eight thirty. On the eighth morning of the eighth. I'm working on um, posting a video that shows how I made the papers and did this part. That's coming to you today. And then uh, this background was going to be a separate video, but I think I'm going to fast forward you through part of it and then just do the step right up. <laughs> of course, you guys are in the middle of this video right now, so it's stupid to explain this to you. Sorry, I'm looking for my Stabilo. I'm just thinking out loud. I'm, I'm trying to keep everything straight and it's it's just getting harder and harder and harder. Because my brain's a mess. My brain's a mess. Hey, look, I found my sharpener. How funny is that? I could not find this yesterday. Saved my life. All right, we're gonna finish up this creepy guy today and then um, hopefully I can you know, just finish this video. I had already done part of it, but then I decided to see if I can fast forward you through part of it and uh, just do some re, re imaging on things here. I did kind of want to adjust his colors a little bit, but um, I'm going to try the Stabilo first and see what we can come up with. 
just by doing that. Isn't he creepy? As you guys know, I'm not a huge... Uh, I love the images from the circus. I don't really like the a lot of the practices that they had, so... I think in ways they were a little creepy, absolutely. Uh, all right, let's get some more water on this guy. I'm looking for a little bit finer brushwork here on the Stabilo. I'm trying to have a better control over it for this particular section. Uh, sometimes I do like that. Uh, like having, having control when I want control. And, Letting it go blurry and crazy when it, it's appropriate. But here, I wanted to kind of bring them out a little bit. And you see how I have that brush uh, directed and the particular brush that I chose. So instead of my normal stumpy brush, I'm using something that has a finer point that will blend. So this would be a brush that I would use uh, for my acrylic paintings also. This would be something it's got a nice, great point to it. it. Hasn't been completely destroyed yet by sitting in water for too long. <laughs> it happens. Okay, we're wanting, we do want some grunge with him. I just don't want it to be overbearing. I kind of want to bring it down over his hat here and see if we can't shadow that face a little bit more here. There we go. This um, image did really melt onto this paper nicely. I, it it really just kind of melted in there. Wonderful. Move your book to where you need it to be uh, to get the best lines possible. Don't think that you have to work on one direction. You can move it. Well, we still can. Won't be always able to. Oh, yeah, you can usually. Okay, just kind of grunging. Not very exciting, but I am trying to be careful with it. Okay, let's see here. What do we have now? Let's do the lettering sign. And then I'll go through it and I will do the final adjustments with, with everything. I think on this one, I can do the smear and smudge. I'm not going to be nearly as careful with this. I'm going to grab a, a different brush here for this one. This might be a little bit too big. Might not have enough control with this. But this point, other than this guy, haha, does still have a, a really nice chisel here. So let's just kind of very uh, mostly dry. Trying not to smear it too far into the are we going to have enough control with you, buddy? Yes, we are. Okay. Well, so far, so good. Oh, that's lovely. Until you see the tickets. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a cool page. I think I figured out how I'm going to do this. Uh, the the uh, shaker ticket page. Yes, I am just drawing the uh, stabilo down through there, kind of just darkening those interiors a little more. All right, what do we think about this guy? He feels a little yellow right here to me. Um, where's my coffee? question is, is what do I want to use to calm them down? My distress inks are always good. Let's see, maybe if I go over him with um, let's look here. Maybe the tea dye? That's a very dirty uh 
ink pad. Still has ink in it though. It's a good brown. And it really pushes them into the background even more. And it is still blending that stabilo that's on there. Realize that what I'm doing is I'm taking something wet over a stabilo. It's going to affect it. So we're just going to go right in here with this too. That's better. It can still be better. Let's bring in this uh, Victorian velvet. Again, it's a color that I've used quite often. It would be one that I would suggest if you're coloring your um, images at all that you get this guy. It's um, good for um, cooling down colors, cooling down your whites so that they don't come forward too much. Good shadow color. Um, Victorian velvet. All right, let's get a little bit more of green up in here. This is looking flat, so we don't want it to look flat. And we're going to pull his face down here, give him a little bit more shadow in there. Right in there. And actually, we're going to pull this shadow down into his face. It's just graying him down. Uh, there. We're going to pull down half of this. Leaving this brightest area bright. Just giving him extra dimension. We're trying to. That's the attempt here. Pushing these pieces and parts back, letting his hands still come out front, maybe pulling back part of this guy here, what have we got, I'm just getting better, okay, let's go in with, uh, let's see, where are our markers, let's just see what we can do with these guys, I don't have a ton of these, but they have great points to them. And uh, we're just going to do a little extra coloring on him. Watch your fingers, they're dirty. Now I'm going back in and adding the sunlight back, kind of. If you do it quickly, and do it before it uh, dries all the way and so you can kind of blend it. It's nice. Perfect. All right, let's get a little bit more definition here between his shirt and his face. And under here. I think. Let's uh, do the same but the opposite here. So we're going to bring this pink down here, just doing a little bit of a definition on his shirt collar and kind of changing the color a little bit from the assumed white to, uh, you know, kind of this pinky tone. Let's see if it works. I don't know if it's going to work. This only comes through, you know, trial. Here. Beautiful. And let's take this back color down here too. This is a little bit cooler color, so it's not a, you know, that yellow. That first color that we used was a much warmer color. So, um, this works well in the shadows, and then I'll come back with the, the darkest shadows here in just a second. But we're, we're just slowly building up 
uh, a little bit more definition in him. The image itself was very, uh, um, you know, sunburst type. So, you know, it didn't have a lot of detail here in the backs. We're going to take that guy down, though. All right, let's kind of neutralize those colors here a little bit. Add some definition in here. I don't know if I like that as much, but we're just going to kind of work with it here a little bit and see what it does. We're going to go back to the other side here very quickly. Really cool down this back shoulder. I want it to sit back there. Almost completely disappear. I don't like that one there, so we'll just. Your bluest tones are going to sit in the very back. So you see how I've created the roundness here. I actually need to go back through and take out a little bit in there. Add in that shadow right there. And we're going to add in the shadow over his face. Let's kind of give him these dark set eyes. We're going to do this little trick here. Accentuating that creepy face. Back down in here. What do we think? I'm sitting a little bit too close to it. I'm gonna kind of get up here. I think he's pretty damn awesome. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's kind of touch up these colors here along here. Now, if you see how this ink is actually just kind of um, spreading up and through there, I love how that's reacting. There we go. I'm going to kind of take this down a little bit right there. Let's sit back just a touch more. There we go. These are focal, not the words. But uh, let's see. Let's see what we can do with this green here, actually. Sometimes green uh, can really neutralize, especially when you've got all these other colors on here. It's a good gray color. All right, I like it, I like it. I'm just gonna try to do uh, one last thing with it and I wish I had a Q-tip. I'm gonna go grab a Q-tip. Can you hold on for one second while I grab Q-tips? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, Q-tips, great tools should be in your toolbox. Let's pull out uh, a little bit of the alcohol here and uh, try not to rub too much when you do this. Just putting a little bit of alcohol in a cap. We're going to be very controlled about this. We're going to try to be. Dip your Q-tip in the alcohol. And we're just going to start to try to pull a little bit of those absolute highlights back. All right, the sun's hitting this guy on the back of the head. 
try to pull that back up just a touch. Pull this back up. And that's gorgeous. Give this guy here. Now I could probably be doing this with water also. Uh, the alcohol does just kind of take everything off. So I like the effect that the alcohol can give. And it does a great job. It's, you know, it, it take off the ink if it's in the wrong place. It'll take off the stabilo. It'll take off anything that you don't really want there if you scrub it hard enough. There we go. Just bringing them out just a touch here. Letting that sunlight come out. Get this brutal hand. A little claw hand coming out here. Now that turned really muddy. There must be a lot of ink there. So we want to be careful of that. Uh, we'll just bring a marker over the top of it, actually. And it just went to full on smear. Well, that wasn't good. Color adjusting isn't always easy. Actually, that's kind of the way his hand is shaped there. Yeah. And I have a tendency to go too far sometimes. I've, I've, I've had to fix enough stuff. I know that that happens. And let's see if I can get that hat rim back right there. Here we go. Look at his face just gross me out. Again, I think this is a guy dressed up in costume. Boy, did he do a great costume. It didn't say anything about who the person was or any of that information. So I don't know. All right, I like him just like that. I might come back and do a couple extra little tweaks. Uh, maybe. You see, see, sometimes you just go too far. You just want a little bit more of a delineation between that hat and his... I'm going to smudge that a little bit more. Gorgeous. Okay, there is the step right up page. Now I'm going to do the intro and then I'm going to re edit this page. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this will be tomorrow's video. So uh, let's see. Today is the 8th. You will see this on the 9th. Okay, guys, we'll chat soon. Bye.